Hello, my name is Tony Baines. I'm the Applications Manager with Mazak Canada. Today I'm going to share with you our new software, which is Mazatrol DX. Mazatrol DX is a PC-based software that will allow you to make a digital twin of your machine, and then you can utilize some of the features that we find in our latest controls, and you can even use them on machines that may not have those, those options. With Mazatrol DX, one of the features that we have in this is Quick Quote. Quick Quote allows us to make a quote from a solid model. All I have to do is point to my USB stick and pull in my solid model. And from there, I can adjust my parameters for what type of material the part is made out of, what my raw material looks like, and then from here, I can just go and hit execute. It is going to scan the model and take a look at the uh, tool data that I have, and it is going to create a program in the background. This program will then take all the times for all the features. It will give me indications if the process has worked. It will give me a list of tools and also tell me how long those tools are going to run for. It gives me a cycle time and it also gives me an amount to charge. Inside of this uh, settings we can go and we can set up our shop rates, we can set up how much our material cost is, and we can add in whatever our fracturing cost may be for this job. We can also adjust our quantities that we have to run and we get an update of what we should charge per piece and what we should charge for the total job. Now from here, once we have secured the quote and we have the job, we can actually add in more details using the solid mazatrol. Solid mazatrol is what the quick quote uses in the background. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this out of the list and I'm going to start from scratch because I want to have a little bit more control over the process. So I'm going to grab that same file and we're going to go and load it up. The next thing it's going to ask is what is it made out of. So just like in quick quote, I'm going to grab my material, give in my positions and say OK. Now it does load the material in but it is flush on one side that is okay because I have full control over the process. I can switch the directions on this so that and move it around so I am in a position where I'm happy and say finish and now it's going to go and ask me how I want to process the part. It doesn't make sense for me to turn this and do this undercut so I'm going to say come up to this position for the first first chuck. On my second chuck I can come and match up that to that feature. Oh, the um, we have some built-in overlaps, so we have good blending. I can take a look at what's happening on the ID and what's happening uh, from both directions. Once I'm happy, I say OK. Now, with any solid model, whenever we have tapped holes, they always show up as just a drill. All we have to do is come in and tell uh, Maze Control DX that what size tap we are using and we can tell it all the holes inside of this model of the same size are those taps. Once we're happy we say OK and it, got, it gets added to a list. From that point we can go through and add whatever features that we need to add in. Once we're happy with how everything's set we just say finish. Now it's going to scan the model, take a look at my parameters that I have set and I have this AI setting button. I can go and scan existing maze control programs to create, this, uh, to create this AI model. I get my list of my layout. Typically I would like to face before I drill so I have the ability to quickly come in and make a change, change the process. Once I'm happy with how it looks I say OK. Next thing it's going to say is, is looking at tools. It shows me what tools I have in my machine and it tells me information on my insert so I can get that in advance. It also gives me warnings if I have any tool that may not be in the machine so I can source that out and get it ready to go. Once I'm happy I say OK, I can create my file and at this point it has created my maze control program. Now this is a complex part. This program has around 77 units and it takes me about a minute to get to this stage. Tools get pulled in, feeds and speeds, coolant gets pulled in from the tool data side, but the most important part is it brings in all of the math directly off the model. 
so we don't have any issues with the, with the uh, print being misread or an operator putting in the wrong information. Just like AI, we want to take a look and see with an intelligent set of eyes and tweak things out. I've gone and done that in the background. Right from the office, I can come and take a look at my tool paths. I can take a look at my machine simulation and I can go and see if I have any crashes, if I have any over travels. I can ensure that I have a logical program that is running effectively. Once I'm happy with how my program looks, I can actually take that one step further inside the software. And from this cutting advisor, I get a lot of information. I get my overall cut times, but I also get a breakdown of my non-cutting times. So I can see what my ATC times and my rapid movements are. I can see if I have a fairly efficient program. I can also take a look and see how my loads are. I can focus in on tools that I may be running for a long time. And I can actually see the torque curve of the machine itself. From here, I can go and I can dial in my graphically to make sure that I'm running in an optimal state and make sure that I have an efficient program. And I've done this all from the office before we're even ready to start the job. Once we're ready to begin machining, we can go into our program and program file. And from here, I have the ability to create a project. So I can go create project. I'm just going to call it discover. I'll just call it Discover 6. I can add in whatever programs that I want to add. And from here, I now can save that project data. This gets saved out as an XML file. And once I have that, I have the ability to come into my project manager. And I can grab my projects. And I can take my projects that I have, select the machine that I want to send it to, once I have it selected, I can send it over to the machine. So once we come over to our machine, we can go to that same location in the program file and we can take a look at our project data and we can load the project data in. We can select all of our features, including parameters, which it will warn us if we want to overwrite those and load all that information in. Once the information is loaded, we are able to go and do our simulations and everything like normal, but on the latest version of, Mazer, of the uh, Smooth AI control, we have this setup sheet. This setup sheet allows us to load that project in. We can click on summary display and we get the information uh, for the entire project. Any tools that need to be added will be displayed, and if none are displayed, the operator can get an idea of what tools are being used and how they're laid out. Once the operator is ready to start the setup, we can go and load in the program that we want to use. Once we have that selected, we can say OK. And it gives me warnings on what needs to be added into the machine. I can look at my tool registries. I can see if anything's missing. At this point, the operator can go through the list from the tool data page, make sure tools are set up, inserts are good. Once they're happy with that, they can also load in the tool models. So everything for collision detection that was used in the office is also being used at the machine. From here, we can go and start setting up our JAWS. Under JAW attributes, we can go and load in the program because we can use any number of programs for a project that we like. Once we load that in, we can load in the data for the Chuck JAWS. The operator has the information of what JAWS need to be placed in the machine. Once they've done it, they click finish and they get a timestamp. So we can begin to narrow down where our pain points are in our setups, how long these setups are actually taking to get done. We set up the JAWS for both sides, and then we can move on to setting up our work. On our work page, we actually get the information that the material was used for programming. The operator can check the material, and if they see that the material is the wrong size, we're going to be able to catch that before we begin running the program. It also gives information on stickouts, so that we can ensure that the machine is set up properly. Once we click finish, the last process is to come in to take a look at the origin and how to set it up. The system automatically gives the operator where the, the probe is inside the machine. So that gives them the ability to load it up quickly and it says on the, on the setup sheet where to touch off the piece. And once they've done so, they can set that and then the program is ready to run it automatically loads the program into the background and they're able to hit cycle start and then they can run.
One of the really nice features that comes with Mesotrol DX is the ability to go into our file manager and we can go and take our programs. We can grab a Mesotrol program and then we're able to actually backdate it to previous controls. We can backdate all the way down to 640. So we can use these advanced features that are coming out of the Mesotrol DX. These features that you would only get on the AI control and we can actually move them to other controls as far back as the 640. And the nice thing is we can actually take old programs with this software and bring them forwards up to smooth. So if you have existing programs and you buy a new machine, you don't lose that, that time that you spent writing those programs. You can move them forwards, make a minor adjustments and get them able to run. Mazatrol DX is a subscription-based software. Um, it is available for three years and it is quite affordable. And we're so, we believe in it so strongly that it is available at, for a three months trial. So you can try it out, try these features, see how they work in your shop, at, and at the end of the trial, you can go ahead and purchase or just remove it if, if you're not happy with it. Thank you very much. Have a great day.